everybody, and welcome to Adam vs. the Man part. I don't even know what anymore of our coronaphobia presidential libertarian debate series where I, Adam Kokesh, your favorite Libertarian Party presidential primary candidate, hopefully, gets to debate one-on-one -on -one everybody else. We have invited every officially listed Libertarian Party presidential candidate who is on the LP.org website. And we had to take a little bit of a break from this series. You might have seen some of our earlier debates with Arvind Vora, Dan Berman, Max Abramson, who just announced for the Reform Party, very interesting. Uh, uh, who, who else? Mark Whitney, who has dropped out. Uh, John McAfee, of course. Brian Ellison. And, uh, you know, there have been a, a few others. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't get everybody's name off the top of my head, but it's been an awesome series. And it's, it's really interesting, I think, so far, as a little bit of a litmus test, are you brave enough to just talk to Adam one-on-one -on -one for a little while? Well, it appears that uh, most of the other front-runner candidates right now are not willing to do that, sadly. So today, I'm very excited to be joined by Keenan Wallace Dunham, someone who we just didn't get to in the first part of the series before we had to break for our production retooling. So, Mr. Dunham, if you would, please uh, introduce yourself to, to my audience, who, who probably only knows you from uh, so, some of your social media comments on, on my posts and, and your, your presence online around this presidential campaign. Yes. Uh, thank you for having me, Adam. And uh, I was at uh, quite a few conventions, but, at, but due to technicalities, I wasn't included in some of the debates. Um, I w this is the first time that you and I have been in a debate and been able to debate each other. And I'm, re I'm very happy to be here. And uh, there's a lot of uh, current events going on within the LP, and really, uh, we're struggling to stay a cohesive party right now, and uh, we've not gotten any media attention that we've deserved this whole race, and really, um, that's due to some of what the LP itself has been doing. Um, they should have been promoting us the whole time. Uh, there's no, never been any media attention. So uh, how, how do members and how do non-libertarians get to see our contest? And, I can, uh, you're, hold on, you're, you're jumping way ahead. Right. And I, I, I just want to put that in context for people in, in, in my audience today who or our audience who might not know the background in this. And what, what Keenan is referring to here is that we have been running, myself actually is the earliest to announce, almost two and a half years now. And, you know, Arvind Vorha jumped in just a few months after I did. Kim Ruff was there. Dan Berman has been there. And we've been running to spread the message and to grow the party and to win the nomination and all of these things that you think the party leadership, the national leadership would be like, yes, Let's promote the heck out of this. You guys are doing debates. Let's do this. Let's blow this up. Let's get PR for the party. And they haven't been. And, and this has been a fight that Arvind Vora has, has certainly taken some point on and asking the Libertarian national leadership to support the whole process and the candidates in the race already with their social media, with their email list, with their platform, et cetera. And it would seem as though we know why they haven't been doing this now is that they didn't want to promote any candidates who would be competing with justin amash now that justin amash is in the lpky has their very suspicious polls that keep me out of the top five after winning two feeder polls and then that's the debate with amash that the libertarian party shares on their youtube channel live shares on with on all of their social media so is, is that a, a fair background for you on that yes, one i agree with all that yeah and so yeah, but, but tell, would, us, would... tell us tell us Sorry, if you want to respond to that, go ahead. I just wanted to give you the I chance to I just want to, to let everybody know that I've already written a, uh, a review for the Judicial Committee of the Libertarian Party to look into this, and I'll be sending that out this week, and hopefully I can get it to the Judicial Committee before May 22nd so it can be reviewed. Um, basically, just two issues that uh, the having two conventions may be against the bylaws and uh, and really they need to look at it to decide that and uh it really splits us into uh 
halves of elite, one part of the party being able to vote for president, president not, and vice president. And then uh, basically the rest of the convention is going to be later on and will not affect that. So you leave it where nothing in the bylaws can affect the nomination. The members at large can't interact with the delegates. And really, uh, if you're following the bylaws for verbatim, you can't have two conventions. And, and again, just for background on this, what we saw last Saturday, or excuse me, Saturday before last, was that the LNC voted to postpone the convention to pursue an in-person one and voted against an all-online convention. But as of last Saturday, they voted to have the Libertarian uh, presidential and vice presidential nominations done virtually on schedule on May 22nd with a online vote. And it would be one thing if all of this was happening with complete transparency and a clear drive to have an accountable vote. And, and I, you know, I've been pushing for an in-person convention for the sake of the integrity of the vote. I don't think it's, it's possible to get the institution and organizational buy-in to have a vote online with accountability this late in the game. There is one way, and it's gonna be a very slow process. And if they go with this, I, I would support that. And that's to eliminate the secret ballot, every single delegate, votes by name every round and it's auditable and verifiable every step of the way if they do it that way you know maybe they have the rounds of because no one's going to have this on the first ballot you know we see even amash coming in at the last second as, as a front runner perhaps nowhere near 50 percent clearly the way that the libertarian party nominating process is supposed to work is to create a consensus candidate through elimination voting and if they do this process fairly It'll be anybody but Amash, probably mm -hmm. Hornberger or, or Jorgensen or myself. But really, it, it opens it up to the best grassroots candidate, whereas if they're able to cheat the process this way, it looks like they're going to get Amash in without him having to go to a single convention or in-person debate. Right. Without campaigning for the nomination. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Or being vetted. I would prefer an in-person convention, so the bylaws affect the process. Members, all the members can affect the process. Media can be there. You draw in new members to the party. Uh, with an online convention, you're you're stuck with just the delegates, really. And um, you the the process of having the rest of it all online is really not feasible either. You know, just the entire process of bylaws and floor voting and everything like that. So uh, the two weeks ago, basically, they were at the plan was just to delay and be in person, all in person. And that's what we should have stuck with. And uh, from what I've heard and what's what's been uh, posted on the Internet, uh, the chair, Nick Sarwak, um, just promoted this this uh, online vote on May 22nd uh, on the last vote that the LNC uh, did and really. Uh, he forced it through. That's what I heard. And um, I think it, it violates the bylaws and, and that's where we are right now. And uh, I think it's possible to even strike down that last vote if you find that it violates the bylaws. That's what I'm trying to push right now. Mm. Now, you might be paying more attention to the inside baseball than me here. What is the status with the Judicial Committee? As I recall from the 2018 convention, there was some controversy in that we didn't get to the elections of the Judicial Committee, which means that there is was, there was either the former sitting Judiciary Committee, which would be at least functioning, or none. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Well, uh, I just looked on the website. We have the 2020 Judicial Committee from 2018, and uh, I have to actually email all the delegates and let them see if 10% want to go forward with recommending what I'm saying to the Judicial Committee. So right. that, that as, I, as, as I understand it, this is this is 10% of 2018 convention delegates, because we so, are, yeah. and I myself as an 18 delegate, we are the current sitting yes. membership of the convention, right? Correct. The last until, regular convention. Until the 2020 delegates get credentialed, which 
there is no process for with an online vote, correct? <laughs> right. Yeah, really, so, I would have to wait until July to say anything about it if I if it doesn't go through to the judicial committee right now. So that's what we're in. That's the process we're in right now. So to fight this incursion, this this uh, sabotage of the Libertarian Party, I see two possible fronts, right? To one, organize the anybody but a mosh campaign and play ball with their system and possibly beat Nick at his own corrupt game and say, look, we still have more people for anybody but a mosh. Right. Or to fight this procedurally, and these aren't mutually exclusive. We can obviously we can do both. But uh, are you committed to to condemning this upcoming national convention vote online as illegitimate? Yes, actually, I think both strategies. Uh, it's illegitimate, and I would also go the route of anybody but Amash at this point. Just because I think there have been shenanigans with uh, with uh, communication between Nick and the Amash camp, which is you know totally improper. There aren't really any bylaws against it, but just a vote of the judicial committee could could remove him from office and suspend him as chair. Which I am actually putting that in on paper and suggesting that he be suspended as chair. And at the same time, I would love to unite with other candidates and say we don't want Amash being able to get this without campaigning because it's totally improper. He never campaigned for nomination, and one online debate, you know, is not enough. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you had the chance to debate Amash in front of the Libertarian National Committee dele or convention delegates, what would your case be? What questions would you ask him? What would you do to differentiate yourself? My biggest concern is that he's never done anything for any whistleblowers. Um, there are other issues. Uh, I mean, he just hasn't been on the forefront while he's been in Congress on in, on a lot of liberty issues. And uh, I don't. I doubt that his stance would be to free Julian Assange. Uh, you know, we helped get Chelsea Manning and Jeremy Hammond off of their uh, their contempt charge of not wanting to be on a grand jury, secret grand jury, you know, they actually sacrificed uh, and uh, made Julian Assange's case better by not testifying against him. And they are heroes. So I really, I really don't see Justin Amash putting any effort in that fight. Um, and there are a lot of other liberty issues where I would want, want him fully vetted. And as for yourself, what would you say that you're offering for the LP as the presidential nominee? Uh, I would say look at my platform on my website, Dunham2020.com. Um, I'm strong on uh, legalizing cannabis uh, and, you know, a thorough. Basically, you know, I've, I've looked at other candidates like yourself, and uh, I think the entire government should be voluntary services. So I would say that um, uh, basically make everything voluntary and uh, close as many of the uh, programs where you don't have a choice that are mandatory and uh, on the path towards basically dismantling the government into uh, just ju judiciary and, uh, and uh, basically legalize as much as we can of, of uh, human interaction, whereas the government right now is basically uh, making everything we do either recorded or mandatory or, you know, basically we're sheep, we're, we're cattle to the government right now. Now, it sounds like you're taking uh, a similar page, more, more from Arvin and Dan Berman, Dan Taxation, Seth Berman's playbooks in restructuring the federal government around the principle of voluntarism. I assume that part of your platform then would include pardoning every single person you lawfully can for victimless crimes. Is that correct? If we realign the entire justice system for no victim, no crime, you would probably be releasing millions of prisoners. I want to release millions of prisoners right now. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, can you, I'm going to put you on the spot on this, though, Keenan. Can you say 
every single person facing federal charges for a victimless crime, if the pardon comes to your desk, you would sign it? Yes, and I would also abolish the death penalty. All right. Okay, so that would that would obviously, and I, I like the way that, that uh, Dan Berman puts this as saying, you know, if, if we make taxation a theft, if we stop enforcing taxation, tax violation laws at the federal level, basically any part of the federal government that remains has right. to find a way to fund itself voluntarily. So you're definitely on that side of things, and I, I very much appreciate that. So going in, and you know, I also like you. You totally ruined my my uh, my order of questions for for okay. this debate for this conversation. Sorry, but I really, I, I really respect the fact that you just as as a, as an interviewee, you just take charge and say, "No, oh, that's okay, Adam. I'm not going to answer the question I was asked. I'm going to answer the question I wish I was asked." And you got me. We just went along with what you wanted to talk about for the first you know, part of this interview. And I, I think that's actually a, a great sign of your ability to steer the conversation because I wanted you to showcase yourself as a candidate. And, and you know, let's talk about our contrasts. Uh, and, you know, maybe you can win some of my supporters if you give them a better option and vice versa and have that, you know, conversation of ideas. But, I, you know, what you did is you, you, you showed that you care more about the party and the cause and the integrity of the movement by steering the conversation towards these things. So you know, I, I don't mind changing the focus to that because that is more pressing right now. But before I ask any more questions, I get back into this, because you know, like you, I have been following the LNC meetings. I have been reading the emails. I, I have been seeing the, the inside baseball stuff around this. And, and, you know, in a way, I, I don't want to talk about it. I want to stay on a, a, you know, a positive message. And this is one of the right. things that I just I resent about politics and even the Libertarian Party. As much as I love to say I'm not a politician, I'm an anti-politician because I'm a libertarian. There's still this aspect of politics to it. And, and what we're doing right now, I think because of, of saboteurs in the party, we are fighting amongst each other more than ever before. That's what makes us weak and liable for this kind of manipulation. So before before we go back to that and wrap up with the LNC, sure. is there I mean you you've made your point clear about your candidacy that that you you are going to apply ethical libertarian principles. Is there anything you want people to know about you personally or your background before we go back to the juicy gossipy stuff to to wrap this up? <laughs> Uh, yes, there, there's a major, um, uh, well, actually, I'm at dual running against Lindsey Graham uh, for Senate of South Carolina as well. So I was just able, by chance, to file for both, and I will be uh, seeking the South Carolina nomination to uh, run as a senator uh, against Lindsey Graham. And I've basically researched a huge uh, bit of corruption on his part with a uh, power company called Scana that no longer exists. Uh, that was sold in 2019 to Dominion, Dominion Energy. Well, the Attorney General, and of course this plays against Trump's administration and gives me uh, ammunition against Trump's administration that is actually legal. Um, uh, William Barr, the Attorney General of the United States, served on Dominion Energy's board of directors for 10 years, right up until he was confirmed and made uh, the attorney general. So he was possibly involved in the purchase of Scana. That right there is a conflict of interest that makes him culpable for a crime of uh, creating a, a Dominion Energy monopoly. And I, I campaigned to uh, smash the monopoly of Dominion Energy. It is not only in 18 states, but it also precludes and stops green energy in all those states. So that, that's a huge issue that I'm uh, pushing out there and trying to get into the public. And, of course, the press is not covering it. Um, but Lindsey Graham needed someone to get Scana out of his hair. It was his pet project to have these nuclear plants built in South Carolina and they failed and wasted $8 billion. So 
Lindsey Graham is needs to be removed from office, but I am running against him. And William Barr needs to be removed from office and shouldn't be the attorney general because he is actually sitting on a jurisdiction, sitting on a law to prevent Dominion Energy from being uh, declared a monopoly or having any antitrust laws go against it. So I'm, I'm running in Lindsey Graham against Lindsey Graham for uh, that purpose to to reveal to everyone that there is a huge uh, monopoly in Dominion Energy that they are protecting. I love it. I love it. Specific, targeted, issue-based campaigning with a very clear objective. That's that's yeah, beautiful. There's a lot of so, money involved too. It's huge. So turning this back to then the LP presidential candidates, what is your objective in this race? Basically, to arm people with the truth is my biggest uh, goal. Um, there's so many intricacies that, that you and I and all the candidates have studied over the years about uh, the, the federal government and the corruption in the government. And uh, basically, it boils down to all human interaction should be voluntary, and we have to fight for our freedom against the federal government against corrupt politicians, against corporations, and we use the NAP, the non-aggression principle, to do that. So I'm um, just putting a bunch of truth out there, resources, people can uh, campaign on any issue on their own and take that freedom in their own life. And uh, it's like Samuel Adams said, I'm, I'm just setting the brush fires of freedom in the hearts and minds of men and women everywhere. and. Uh, um, just getting the truth out there, just like you are. That's beautiful. So, Keenan, bef before we, we close out, I want to make sure that we've covered all of the Libertarian Party gossip from, sure. I hope, an emotionally detached, intelligent perspective, as, as I can tell that you bring to this conversation. It's very easy for us as candidates who are not just an Amash, to be tempted by the division, the negativity, to, uh, to see this corruption and focus on the corruption in a way that pulls us off our positive messages. You know, even for me on social media, the last few days, it, it really hurts my soul to say, like, I'm, I'm not talking about freedom anymore. I'm talking about, I'm still talking about freedom plenty, don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm talking about corruption within the Libertarian Party. And yeah. I, I know one way or another, this is coming to a head uh, next weekend. Not this coming weekend, for those of you watching. But uh, there are a few more debates coming up between now and the official National Libertarian Party convention debate happening now Thursday, uh, May 21st. It looks like, and I've been very cautious with my language here, to not make any false accusations. But sure. it looks like Nick Sarwark, our National Party chair, is manipulating the nominating process in order to get Justin Amash the nomination. Keenan, can you say that more or less decisively than I have said it? And what do you think might be the motivations behind this? Um, I think, uh, I think basically that uh, Nick has planned this for a while. Uh, we've seen him court Amash. And Amash really wanted a guarantee that he would be the nominee. He doesn't feel like campaigning to libertarians. He won't be campaigning for libertarians doing it this quick. Uh, and if it's an online vote on the 22nd, he won't really be campaigning for, to libertarians much at all. Um, he's had a short on, online presence, social media, and that's been about it. So uh, I'm in the camp of anybody but Amash. And... We should also be looking at removing Nick as the chair of the Libertarian Party. And uh, yes, this does sadden me uh, that, uh, the, that the Libertarian Party is going to be having these problems. Uh, 2016 was a great convention. 
I'd like to have a completely in-person awesome convention this year. And maybe that'll still happen. That is even possible if we can get this to the Judicial Committee, uh, a complaint to the Judicial Committee. So we'll see. And uh, I will be in that fight. Well, let, let me ask you, I'm going to really get your, I want to get your take on one part of that question I think you missed here. Why is this happening? Like, what I'll, What are Nick's motivations? What are, is, is Amash uh, a pawn in all of this? Because so far, we have seen nothing other than the bigger strategic moves from Amash. We've seen really nothing to criticize his integrity on, although some people would say the way he, played into the impeachment drama um you know it was was pandering or maneuvering and, and you know worst case scenario there that's still not really an ethical violation i i don't think so i don't i don't want to impugn amash in any way unless you're you, you've got something i'm missing but certainly with with sarwark and with you know having himself hinted at running for the vice presidential nomination uh, you know, who knows what he's up to, but it looks like he's I think, uh, I think failing that and Amash flailing. Was cut loose from the Republican Party, and he's he's dealing the way that he's used to. And uh, Nick was there to deal with him, but basically, I'm not sure of any of the specifics. I don't have any of that, uh, but it's been improper, and that's just not the way to seek the nomination of this party. So you're you're saying it could be as simple or as petty as Sarwark was told that the Amash camp Sarwark thinks that the Amash campaign is going to work with him better than any of the other candidates, and he's right. just being as as slimy as he can get away with in manipulating the process. Right? It could that could be as far as the conspiracy goes. Well, there's obviously a lot of money in it, but I don't have any specifics about that, so I can't comment on it. But there's, uh, sure, there's uh, media money, there's yep. uh, big donor money, there are big donors who are libertarian, and maybe that's what caused this to happen, but I just don't have any of that information. Right, so to your point there, the libertarian nominee, even with a moderate fundraising effort at this point, with the backing of the party, can expect to raise uh, very comfortably somewhere between 5 and $10 million over the I, next few months. I think the libertarian party should have already sued for equal media time for all the candidates. Uh, well, that's, that's not that's, been that's, the same process. Yeah, no, that's a bigger issue. And so that's, that, that suggests other things that are much more disturbing because the nomination is worth an estimated $100 million worth of free media, or should say comes with about $100 million worth of free media. And for that, you have to go, well, with the old parties who have multi-hundred million dollar budgets, would they be willing to spend a few dollars to protect their racket, to make sure that the Libertarian Party nominates someone who's a weak candidate, who isn't going to fundamentally challenge the duopoly, who isn't going to grow the party or the movement because they're not going to speak to Libertarian principles. Th that's what I'm more concerned with. Because if, if you're the, the, the Dems or the Republicans, you go, yeah, how do we work together to keep the Libertarian Party irrelevant? And yeah. that's, that's what concerns me more is that this is a push to get, and it, it's not the. It, it's not necessarily that Amash is the weakest candidate we could possibly have, but that the he is the weakest candidate that the Libertarian Party can be tricked into nominating. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, I am like you know, it, two things have to happen for the saboteurs and the infiltrators to win here. And that would be that they successfully hold the online vote. And I think that one, your challenge could actually procedurally stop it from happening. Challenges from people on the floor at, at this thing could, uh, you know, raise a challenge. It, it could even it could even be uglier. This could lead to a, a full on split, a full on civil war within the Libertarian Party if the nomination process at the convention this weekend is clearly manipulated and then they go to have an in-person convention and they're saying 
possibly Orlando now uh, in July. Uh, I think they made that official, but haven't signed the contract yet. And there's been, even today, some controversy about, hey, this might not be possible in Florida because of their coronaphobia lockdowns and all that. So if the in-person convention is determined to be the uh, bylaw lawful convention, then the delegates at that convention would have the ability to overturn anything that is done online at this point. So I, you know, I, I don't even know what I'm going to be doing here, Keenan. It's, you know, it, it, to me, having put in the last two and a half years, you know, the, the majority of my life's work of the last two and a half years into this campaign, into the Libertarian Party, it's, it's kind of scary to see that this whole thing that we have built could be swept out from underneath us. And, 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 and you and all the other candidates have, you know, built the party, have made this a thing, have kept people engaged. If none of us were here and Amash just, if, if there were no presidential candidates running up to this point, and then Amash just walked in and took the nomination because no one else wanted it, yeah, sure, that's fair. But then there's no party to lead. There's, there's, there's no group of libertarians to get behind him as the nominee. And, you know, I, I've said that I would organize veterans for whoever the nominee is when I've been able to say anybody on this stage, you know, virtual or in person. I haven't been on stage yet with Justin Amash. And, you know, I, I don't know that, uh, that, that I would do that, especially if... You know, if, if this sets the party back, do I, do I, I and, and I, I would rather have someone like you who can at least clearly espouse libertarian principles, be the nominee and wake people up. And I would support you and I would get behind you and I would organize for you because I know that getting you media attention means that more people will hear the message of freedom. And I've heard this argument before and I've discounted it in the past. But right now, seeing all of the great alternatives, it's really tempting to endorse the idea that if we nominate someone who's either not quite libertarian like Gary Johnson or can't speak to the, the actual fundamental libertarian principles uh, in, in his public presentation like Amash, would it be better to, to not support them? Would it be better to direct our efforts in activism to something else, either building the party or local candidates or, or, or something like that. So, you know, if, if Amash is the nominee, if it happens fairly, you know, I, I would have to look at him and consider supporting him. But I haven't had that chance like I have with every other right. candidate over the last two years or at least few months that they've been running. And if, if, if he is nominated in an unfair process, uh, you know, I think I would have to be on the side of people, you know, calling shenanigans and saying, you know, we but I won't be leaving the party. And Keenan, I'd like to ask you to I'd, I'd like to end with 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 your take on this one question and then give you any final thoughts. But you know what COINTELPRO is, the, the FBI program to, to sabotage activist groups that is actually, you know, we've seen FBI agents in the Libertarian Party in the past. Yeah. We know there there are infiltrators from the old parties, it happens all the time with the Libertarian Party. I think that one of their goals is to just make enough of a mess of things so that people have an unpleasant experience and they leave. And I heard a lot of people say this in 16, right? Well, since, since you guys nominated Gary Johnson, I'm out of here. I don't want anything to do with the Libertarian Party. And I stuck around and I, I, you know, I endorsed Gary, but I didn't think that supporting him was really worthy of my greater efforts because amplifying his message wasn't really helping it and, and really possibly hurting the cause of freedom if people got the wrong idea that a, a Libertarian is someone who's socially liberal and fiscally conservative and says the non-aggression principle goes over my head as opposed to no. We are socially libertarian. We are fiscally libertarian. So my, my ultimate question to you is that when they infiltrate to make a mess of things so that we have an unpleasant experience so that people are driven out, are, are you committed to resisting that and staying within the institution organization of the Libertarian Party? 
Absolutely. I'm going to stay in the Libertarian Party and in the Liberty Movement and just speak the truth. That's all I have to do. And uh, I'm not alone in the fight. I'm in the fight with you. And uh, it's it's easy. To, it's easier to speak the truth and save lives now than, uh, you know, actually be in some kind of tyrannical government. What could happen in a police state? You know, We're, we need to speak out now. Yeah, this is a not just trying time for all of us, but we are all facing tests that reveal our true natures. Keenan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Any final thoughts and your websites and how people can get in touch with you, please? Uh, Dunham2020.com is my website. And I want to thank you so much for having me here. And God bless. And, uh, you know, uh, we're all in this fight together. And the country's been through a lot. We need to uh, just remain focused on reopening the economy and uh, have liberty for everybody. Beautiful. Thanks so much, brother. Mwah. Peace and love, y'all. Don't forget to subscribe, follow everywhere you're watching this. Fight the shadow banning. Be an active, engaged consumer of media.